Philippians, the third chapter, verse 13 through 14. Now, I'm just a country preacher. Can I do what I do? Philippians, the third chapter, verses 13 through 14 reads, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press, y'all ought to be helping me by now. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I want to leave the thought with you this afternoon, destined to succeed. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, neighbor, I'm destined to succeed. Gerald Kennedy made a very powerful statement. He said, to be human means to be captured by a dream. God has placed every one of us here to do great things. But I don't know about you, I've learned that life has a way of beating the dream out of you. I've learned that circumstances have a way of telling you that your dream and your vision will never come to pass. I discovered, because I have some children, as we say in Alabama, cheering. I have discovered that at the moment of conception, 500 million potential people are released. Among these 500 million potential people, only one makes it in. Which means every person under the sound of my voice had to compete with 500 million other folks trying to make it into the earth realm. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know I'm a champion because I had to fight my way to get here. And I refuse to let the devil or anybody else stop me from being what God has called me to be. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, neighbor, I'm a champion. I've learned that many times before you reach success, you have to deal with failure. In my own personal life, I've had more failures than I have successes. But I had what's called, what I call the Joseph experience. Joseph had a dream when he was 17 years old. But it didn't come to pass until he turned 30. For 13 years, Joseph had to go through an experience that led him, what many have said, from the pit to the palace. 13 in biblical numerology represents double portion. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, neighbor, I know you've been through some things this year. Come on, let's be real. I know you've been through some things the past few years, but God's getting ready to give you double for your trouble. When he stood before Pharaoh and his dream came to pass, Pharaoh changed his name to zathnath Paneah. This is a name that literally means to have the power to speak like God. In other words, the things that you're going through were never designed to take you out, but they were designed to give you a testimony that when you opened up your mouth and told people what the Lord had brought you through, it would be filled with experience that brings power. Testify to your neighbor and tell them, say, neighbor, I've been through some things. Oh, but God has given me power to come out. I feel like preaching y'all. When he had his firstborn son, and we'll get to point one in just a moment, he called his name Manasseh. Manasseh is a Hebrew name that means cause me to forget. I wish you'd testify to somebody and tell them, say, neighbor, God's got a blessing so great for you. It's going to cause you to forget everything you had to go through to get it. God's getting ready to do something in your life today in St. Louis and the Holy Convocation that's going to give you spiritual amnesia. You're going to forget about all the haters that said you would never make it. You're going to forget about all the jealous folks and backbiters that said you would never come out. You're going to forget about all the people that said you couldn't succeed. Grab your neighbor and tell them, say, neighbor, God's about to give you a Manasseh experience. 
I discovered that with every loss, it's really a win. And the reason why is because my struggle is teaching me a lesson toward my future. Now, I know y'all looking at me funny. I am white. But I'm a member of David's church, which means that I learned when I came into the Pentecostal movement, I was in a powerful, sanctified church in Birmingham, Alabama. And I learned real fast that no matter what you're going through, there's always a praise that's greater than where you are. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the struggle is. There's a praise that'll bring you out of wherever you are. Don't touch your neighbor. Forget about your neighbor. Lay hands on yourself and say, sell. In about 10 minutes, I'm getting ready to give God a praise for where I'm headed. Not for the struggle that I'm in, but for what God's getting ready to release in my life. If you believe it, shiny, yeah, yeah. Point number one. The scripture says, I count not myself to have apprehended, but what I do is I forget those things. The po first point I want to leave with you this morning or this afternoon is you have to let it go. We've been living in the illusion for too long. God bless you, Dr. McCool Lewis. I love you. What is the illusion? The illusion is that we can go back to the past. Look at your neighbor say, the past is gone. But there's another illusion called the future. And until you get there, you can't live in it. So I've learned how to celebrate my now in anticipation of what God is about to release. The psalmist said in Psalms 118 and 24, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. You've got to, excuse me, Psalms 118 and 24. Oh, uh, yes, this is the day. In other words, this is the day, the only time that I have to give God the praise. Many of us are trying to look for a future event, but we don't believe or understand that now is the time. This word day is a Hebrew word, yom, that literally has several translations. The first translation means moment. The second translation means day, 24 hours. The next translation goes on to mean week, then month, year, and lifetime. The Lord spoke to me when I discovered this. He said, son, the key to living a happy life is you have to learn how to celebrate a good moment. If you can string together a celebration of enough good moments, God will give you a good day. If you can praise him and celebrate enough good days, then God will give you a good, year, a good month. If you can celebrate enough good months, he'll give you a good year. If you keep on celebrating, God will release a great life to you. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, it starts right now. Come on, you may not even be able to wait till I get ready to close because there's a praise in the house that says I got it and I got it right now. I wish you'd get prophetic and touch somebody and tell them, say, neighbor, it's already yours. All you got to do is dance like you got it. Talk like you got it. Walk like you got it. Act like you got it. Tell somebody it will come to pass. Can I talk for a few moments? There are four categories to memory loss, and I'm almost done. One of the categories is called cue-dependent forgetting. In cue-dependent forgetting, this is a failure to recall memory based on stimuli or cues that were present when the memory was embedded in your brain. In other words, there are certain things atmospheres and places that you go that embed thoughts in your mind. Now, I know we're a new age church and we like to talk about the new thing, but I was raised by old church mothers. People say, where did Perry come from? I'll tell you where I came from, the prayer meeting. Before I ever stood on the platform, I was a six o'clock prayer warrior at my local church. 
I ran the 12 noonday prayer at my local church. Why? Because I discovered if I was going to do a great work for God, I needed the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. I was raised by older preachers, seasoned men of God. And they used to say something we don't say much anymore, but they didn't know all the Greek, the Hebrew, and the theology. But they understood that when you get saved, you got to stop going to the club. When you get saved, you need to stop cussing. Y'all got to help me. I, I, I didn't know cussing was legal in church anymore. I, I thought that was illegal. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. You got folks that would dance and shout in church, go outside in the parking lot, get in the right St. Louis traffic, get cut off, and start cussing. Y'all don't want to talk to me. If you ain't saying amen, then I'm probably talking about you. But there are certain atmospheres that cue memories, which means you've got to learn how to change your hours of operation if you're single. You can't be hanging out all night talking about I'm witnessing to folks down at the pool hall. Y'all ain't talking to me. You got to learn. Yeah, I believe in holiness. Why y'all looking at me so funny? Ah, you've got to learn how to change your thought patterns. Why? Because when I get in the right environment, it may trigger me to do some things I said I would never do. I tell people all the time, you've got to make up in your mind that you'll never have another season of stupid. Come on, touch your neighbor, say, no more season of stupid. Oh, I'm not going to get called up again. I don't have time. I'm too focused on my vision and where God has taken me to get caught up with what other folks are doing. Come on, touch somebody else. Tell them, say, get released from the season of stupid. Watch this. If you can remove the cue, then you can remove the memory. I have what's called the ministry or the anointing of delete. This is when you act crazy with me or I project my dream and you tell me all the reasons why I can't do it. I will delete you out of my Blackberry, off of my Facebook, Twitter account, MySpace, any other kind of social network you have. Why? Because I only want to surround myself with people that have a mindset that say, whatever God said you can do, you can do it. Oh, I got a friend in Atlanta, Georgia. He's a real friend because he won't let me be satisfied. Before I went on the Trinity Broadcasting Network, he called me. He said, you're the visionary. You preach and teach on vision. He said, what's the next great move for Shane Perry? I said, well, the next thing I want to do is I want to be on TBN. He hung the phone up in my face. I called him back. I said, Reverend, why did you hang the phone up? He said, because you told me that you have to have a crazy dream. He said, you came to my church and preached that unrealistic goals are the only goals worth having. He said, call me back when you get a real dream. Bye. You need to surround yourself with some people that are not talking about how great you used to be, but are pushing you to where God is trying to take you. Grab your neighbor and tell them, say, neighbor, you got a great future ahead of you, but you've got to forget what you've done in the past and start pressing toward what God wants to release in your future. I feel like preaching, y'all. Almost done. Almost done. My past pales in comparison to my future. I've learned how to celebrate where I am. Look at your neighbor and tell them, say, neighbor, I'm praising the Lord right now because I know things are about to change. Point number two, and I'm going to hoop three and we're going to get out of here. Point number two, the writer goes on to say that I press toward the mark. The second point I want to leave with you, it's going to make sense in just a moment, is your dream or your vision should always create skepticism. God's vision for my life is so big that it will cause people to doubt whether or not I can do it. You got to get a dream so high that people say you're crazy. 
Bruce Wilkerson wrote a book entitled The Prayer of Jabez. In the book, he said, you got to get a dream that people believe can never come to pass in your life. Why? Because a God dream is always greater than where you are. A God dream is always higher than what you can think. Can I go a little further? This word mark is the Greek word, which literally means skeptic. The word press means to lean into, which means when you're a true visionary, you lean into skepticism. You embrace people who say you'll never do it. Can I be honest with y'all? I love it when people tell me I can't do something. I get motivated when people say my dream is too big. Why? Because I serve a God so great that nothing is impossible to him. In fact, can I be honest with you? I've learned how to ignore the haters. I'm going to share something with you. Haters are only, they're really just jealous people who are unfulfilled in their own life. But I learned that haters are good. Number one, they're good for the person that's jealous. Why? Because I've learned that anyone that's jealous of another person has probably been called to do what they do. And the reason why they're jealous is because either they don't have enough vision or they don't have the discipline to do what it takes to get there. So instead of becoming a celebrator, they become a hater. So if you're hating on somebody today, God is probably calling you to do what they do. But I learned that celebration always causes multiplication. Jesus took a few fish and some loaves of bread, broke it, celebrated it and it multiplied. In other words, when you can learn how to celebrate the person that's doing what you want to do, God will cause that anointing and that blessing to multiply in your life. Touch somebody and tell them, say, I'm celebrating your future. But the hater is also good for the person being hated on. Because I've learned that anybody that stays at a level of the mediocre, Anybody that wants to be average, anybody that just wants to blend into the crowd, they don't have to worry about people getting upset. But as soon as you get a vision higher than where you are, as soon as you get a vision that people that grew up with you said, Oh, you know, you're going to be like your daddy was. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. As soon as you get a vision that's beyond the control or the spirit of witchcraft in which they're operating in to try to control your destiny, as soon as you start dreaming, people start hating. But I learned how to celebrate my haters. I got a new policy. Every time somebody gets jealous with me, I try to scoop them up and buy them dinner. Why? Because they're a sign that I just went a little bit higher. A little bit higher. Touch a neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm celebrating my haters. Why? Because they're a sign that we're moving on up. Can I talk about vision for a few moments and I'm going to close? Somebody said, preach, white man, preach. Vision is the key to being able to succeed. I won't be long with this. I discovered that vision begins with God. The reason why many of us are unfulfilled and unsatisfied is because we don't really know who we are. Psalms 37 and 4 said, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. I discovered that from a contextual perspective, this particular text has nothing to do with your fleshly desires. In fact, most of us, the reason why we're in trouble is because we got exactly what we thought we wanted. But your flesh can never tell you what you want. Oh, y'all want to look at me funny. I'm going to prove it to you. Lord! I want you to bless me with this man. I know he ain't saved. I know he only comes to church on Sunday, on Easter Sunday. I know he's not submitted, but Lord, give me this man. As soon as you get him two weeks after the prayer and the marriage, your prayer changes to, Lord, would you please kill this man? Why? Because you've got to go after not what you want, but what God has for you in the text. 
Contextually speaking, this psalm literally means from an original Hebrew perspective, delight thyself also in the Lord and he will give you what he intended for you before the foundation of the world, which means before you were born, God knew everything that it would take to fulfill your life. Before you stepped onto this planet, God had already made a custom made blessing with your name on it. The problem is you've been trying to do what everybody else is doing. But grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm getting ready to do what God has called me to do. Watch this quickly. Vision. Vision. From a natural perspective because natural and spiritual vision parallel, I'm almost done. Uh, in natural vision, every person in here is seeing in double. Also, every person in here is seeing uh, not only two images, but an inverted image. There's a part of the brain that lies in between the two hemispheres called the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum's job is to take the two images that you see and bring them into one. Now, can I talk to my church folks for real? The dilemma we have in the church as leaders is that we have a group of people that have the vision of the pastor. And that's wonderful because we should be consumed with the vision of the leader. The problem is they don't have a vision for themselves. So they would dance over the vision. They will shout over the vision. They will holler over the vision. But they don't have any resources to help the vision to come to pass. Then we have a group of people who have a vision. God has prospered them, but they've walked away from the church. David put it like this in Psalms 133 and 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This word behold carries the same word as vision, chalzon in the Hebrew, which literally means mental picturing. Most theologians believe that David wrote Psalms 133 before he became the unified king of Israel, which means he looked out upon an empty field, behold, or had a vision in his mind of what he was going to see in his future. and said, behold, how good it's going to look when everybody gets together. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to bring this thing together. Now I'm getting ready to close here, y'all, but look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, I'm destined to succeed. Come on, tell somebody else, I don't care what you've been through. God has a vision over your life, and no matter what it looks like, I hear the Lord saying, it will, it will it will come to pass and as I get ready to take my seat y'all the last thing that the writer said he said I'm pressed toward the mark for the prize of the high calling now I've learned that out of all of the things that you can do in vision not only do you need to write the vision not only do you need to speak the vision not only do you need to plan for your vision not only do you need to give to your vision but because the vision is a high calling you've got to learn how to stand in a bad position and get a high praise look at your neighbor and say neighbor I don't care what it looks like I got a praise attached to my vision and when I get done dancing my praise is like a magnet that pulls in my healing that pulls in my deliverance that pulls in my change if you believe it shiny air shiny air Shiny air. I got the clothes here, y'all. But this same David understood the principle of being able to stand when things look crazy. He wrote Psalms, the 34th chapter, looking back over his life after he had acted crazy in front of Ahimelech. He looked back as an old man. He said, I made a mistake. He said, instead, of me acting crazy I should have lifted up my hands and he wrote Psalms 34 and 1 oh Lord he lifted up his hands and said I 
will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth I don't care what you're going through my God will give you a praise that can lead you to the victory my God I want y'all to play back there my God will give you the victory that'll push you to the high calling touch your neighbor say neighbor let's go higher in our praise and no matter where I am my situation my problem has to come up to the level of my praise I'm getting ready to sit down y'all but he went on in the verse Psalms 34 and 19 he said many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivered them out of them all Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, deliverance is on the way. I'm coming out of everything right now in the name of Jesus. Psalm 66 and 12 said, after you come out, we've been through the fire, but we didn't get back. We've been through the flood, but we didn't try. But thou has brought us out into a wealthy place. Grab your Neighbor said, neighbor, come on, give him a pull. Tell him, neighbor, not only am I coming out, but I'm going in, into my breakthrough, into my healing, into my deliverance. Come on, shout, let's go in. Well, how do I go in? I go in with a dance. I go in with a holler. Grab somebody and tell them, say, neighbor. I'm getting ready to dance because I'm going in. Shiny hair, shiny eye, yeah, yeah. The psalmist said, Psalms 147 and 1, praise ye the Lord. Psalms 147 and 48 and 1, praise ye the Lord. Psalms 149 and 1, praise ye the Lord. Psalms 150 and 1, praise ye the Lord. Psalms 150 and 6, let everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. You could have been dead. You could have been walking the street. You could have been down and high. But God kept me alive. Lean on your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm still here. I'm still here. And I'm about to dance because I believe that God has taken me higher. Shiny hair. Oh, Gotta close, y'all. But Judah, lean on your neighbor, say, Judah means praise. Sister Leah had a different kind of mindset. The firstborn son she had. And I'm sitting down, y'all. She called his name Reuben. Reuben is a Hebrew name that means see, comma, a son. Exclamation point. She said, now I gave you a boy. Now will my husband love me? But it didn't work. Second son that she had. She called his name Simon. She said, the Lord, the Lord have heard that I was hated. Now will my husband love me? But it didn't work. The third son she had. She called his name Levi. Levi is a Hebrew name that means to be joined. She said, now will my husband be joined unto me but the last son she had she said I've been having all these babies trying to please this man but it's my time now look at your neighbor and say neighbor it's my time now it's my time she said I'm gonna get my head done for myself I'm gonna get my nails done for myself I'm gonna buy some clothes for myself and I'm gonna name this boy Judah and I, I, I will praise the Lord 
for myself. Forget about your neighbor. Lay hands on yourself and say, self, I'm about to get my, I'm going to get my breakthrough. My children will be saved. My money's turning around and I'm about to give God a praise for myself. Throw up your hands and shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. I'm finished. Mark 11 and 24. Whatsoever thing you desire when you pray. Look at somebody say, I ain't got it yet. But I got to pray that says it's mine. He said, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I believe it's already mine. I believe it's already done. Lean on your neighbor, say, neighbor. It's already done. It's already done. All you got to do is praise the Lord like you already got it. Praise him like you already healed. Praise him like you already blessed. Shout like you already out on the count of three, y'all. In St. Louis, let's send up an already done praise before I get back home it's already done in my family it's already done on the count of three y'all let's give him praise one two three come on praise him He's wilding. Wait a minute. You got to add something to your dance before you leave. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, this next praise is attached to my miracle. It's attached to my family. It's attached to my business. And I am about to dance like I already got it. Now come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Come on, praise him. Wait a minute. I'm finished. But there are two other things that your praise do as I sit down. Judah, when he stood before his father, his daddy gave him two blessings. He said, one, your hand shall be on the neck of your enemy. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, with this next stand, I'm going to choke the devil out. I'm going to choke him out of my house. I'm going to choke him out of my family. I wish I had some saints that would give God a choke out praise. Come on, give him praise. Come on, praise. Give him praise. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The second thing that he said, he said, there's a Jew to pray because you're a praiser. I wish I had 20 folks that would act like him. Because you're a praiser. Oh, Lord, I'm going to raise you up above your brothers. Grab your neighbor, say, neighbor. I'm getting ready to give God a praise that takes me high. Let's go high. Come on, praise him. He's wild. Wait a minute. I'm done. Where are my Judites at? I need about a hundred Judites that don't mind changing the atmosphere for the entire service. I need about a hundred y'all step out in the aisles and give God a praise. Give him praise. Come on, praise. Come on, praise. 
When I think about Jesus, what he's done for me. When I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I can dance, 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 all night. When I think about Jesus, what he's done for me. When I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I can go on and dance him all night. Come on, pray. Come on, praise Now throw up your hands and shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. Shout it, yeah. Why am I saying yes? I'm saying yes to my breakthrough. Yes to my miracle. Yes to my turnaround. Yes to my deliverance. Shout it, yeah. Touch three people and tell them it's already done. Come on, tell them it's already done. And I'm about to dance, because I know I already got it. Now shiny, yeah, yeah, Tell him, yeah. Tell him, yeah. Oh, tell him, yeah. Grab one person by both hands. We're getting ready to get out of here. Grab one person by both hands. We're going to get out of here quick. When my wife... She was pregnant. We didn't know it with twins when I preached in the 09 convocation. My twins came premature. When I, I was preaching in Texas, they rushed her into an emergency situation. I jumped on a plane, missed the birth by 30 minutes. One of my children almost died. When I rushed into the back, into the ICU, Mother Maku, I looked at my daughters and I started crying. They didn't look like babies. I looked around the ICU. Although my children were severely premature, they were doing good. I looked around the ICU, and I saw children at the point of death. Watch this. We're about to pray for our neighbor. I told my wife, I said, listen, we're going to pray for our babies one time. We're going to release our faith, and then we're going to believe God that it's already done. But what we're going to do, we're going to pray for all these other children in here. Because we don't know where their parents are. And we're going to intercede for them. How many know the Job blessing still works? You can pray for your friend and God will release you. I want you to forget about yourself. Grab your neighbor's hand and just start praying. Listen, this is a sanctified church. I want to hear some tongue talking. Sanctified Holy Ghost praying. As I pray, pray for that person like you're praying for yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for our neighbor right now. Lord, send the power of the Holy Ghost to that situation. God, you know every struggle. God, you know every need. God, you know the desire that you place in their heart. God, touch their children. God, touch their grandchildren. Touch their husband. Touch their family. Touch their physical body. Whatever it is, God, turn it around in their life. In the name of Jesus. We release the power of the Holy Ghost to heal, deliver, and set free right now in the name of Jesus. Now, if you believe you got it, release that hand. Put those sanctified hands together. Open up your mouth and shout, yeah.
thank you for watching the Jonathan Desvernay Gospel Channel. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.